Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here's a fun number theory question from a Cambridge entrance exam. A proper factor of an integer n is a positive number that divides n but is not equal to 1 or n. Part A. Show that 3 squared times 5 cubed has exactly 10 proper factors. Part B. How many other integers of the form 3 to the m times 5 to the n have exactly 10 proper factors? m and n are integers. Part C. What is the smallest positive integer n that has exactly 426 proper factors? Give your answer in terms of the prime factorization of n. Let's start out with part A. Show that 3 squared times 5 cubed has exactly 10 proper factors. It's pretty easy to directly count this because 3 and 5 are prime numbers. So the factors would be 3, 3 squared, 5, 5 squared, and 5 cubed. We have 3 times 5, 3 times 5 squared, 3 times 5 cubed, 3 squared times 5, and 3 squared times 5 squared. These are 10 proper factors. We don't count 1 and we don't count 3 squared times 5 cubed. But there's a way that we can verify the answer. We'll be able to derive a formula. Now since 3 and 5 are prime numbers, every factor has to be of the form 3 to the power of a times 5 to the power of b, where a is equal to 0, 1, or 2, and b is equal to 0, 1, 2, or 3. So there are three possible values for a, which is 0, 1, and 2, and there are four possible values for b. So how many factors are there? It will be 3 times 4, which equals 12 total factors. Now we just have to remove 1, which equals 3 to the 0 times 5 to the 0, and n, which equals 3 squared times 5 cubed, to count proper factors. So we have 3 times 4 minus 2, which equals 10 proper factors. Now let's solve part b. How many other integers of the form 3 to the m times 5 to the n have exactly 10 proper factors? m and n are integers. So for fixed values of m and n, every factor is of the form 3 to the a times 5 to the b, where a will be equal to 0, 1, 2, all the way to m, and b is equal to 0, 1, dot, 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 to n. So there are m plus 1 possible values for a, and there are n plus 1 possible values for b. So if we multiply m plus 1 times n plus 1, that will give us the total number of factors. We then need to remove 1 and the number itself to count proper factors. So the number of proper factors is m plus 1 times n plus 1 minus 2. And now we know how many proper factors we want. We need there to be exactly 10 proper factors. So this formula must be equal to 10. Add 2 to both sides so we get m plus 1 times n plus 1 is equal to 12. So we now need to count how many solutions are there to this equation. So we need to know the number of ways we have two positive integers multiplied to be 12, where the order does matter because we have m and n. So we have 1 times 12 is equal to 12, 2 times 6 is equal to 12, 3 times 4 is equal to 12. We also have 6 times 2 is equal to 12, 4 times 3 is equal to 12, and 12 times 1 is equal to 12. So there are six possible ways we can do this. So there are six possible solutions where we have the pair m comma n. So there are six ways we have 3 to the m times 5 to the n will have exactly 10 proper factors. But this question is a little bit tricky. How many other integers of this form are there? We have already used 1 for 3 squared times 5 cubed, so there are five other choices. And the correct answer to this is there are actually five other choices. 
And please don't complain to me about the correct answer. I didn't write the question. I would have also tripped up on this detail, but that is the official solution. So now let's go to part C. What is the smallest positive integer n that has exactly 426 proper factors? Give your answer in the form of the prime factorization of n. So this is such a wonderful question. I've actually never solved a question like this in my life. And I love how parts A and B build up to part C, but there's still a lot of interesting twists and turns to get the correct answer. Let's get started by counting the total number of factors of n. Suppose n has a prime factorization equal to 2 to the power of a times 3 to the power of b times 5 to the power of c, and so on. From our previous analysis in parts a and b, we know that the total number of factors of n is equal to a plus 1 times b plus 1 times c plus 1, and so on. To get to the number of proper factors, all we have to do is remove 1 and n, and that will give us the number of proper factors. So we take this product and subtract 2 to get the number of proper factors. We know we want the number of proper factors to be equal to 426, exactly. So this has to be equal to 426. We add 2 to both sides so that the product a plus 1 times b plus 1 times c plus 1 dot 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 is equal to 428. So let's now do the prime factorization of 428. This is equal to 2 squared times 107. So let's focus on this last equation. We need to solve for all possible values where we have a plus 1 times b plus 1 times c plus 1 dot 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 is equal to 428, where a, b, c, and so on are non-negative integers. So just like before in part b, we can get started by considering the ways that we have whole positive numbers will multiply together to be 428. Because we've written out the prime factorization of 428, it will be easy to enumerate the factors of 428. These will be 1, 2, 4, 107, 214, and 428. So how many different ways can we have two or more factors multiply together to be 428? We have 1 times 428 is equal to 428, 2 times 214, 2 times 2 times 107, and 4 times 107. Now, we need to set these factors equal to a plus 1 or b plus 1 and so on, but remember that a, b, and c are the exponents of these prime factors. So how are we going to solve this equation where we have the smallest possible value for n? This will happen when the largest exponents are going to the smallest primes. So let's see some examples to see how this works out. Let's just focus on the first equation. 1 times 428 is equal to 428. Here we have one factor, which is 428. And let's set that equal to the exponent a, which is on 2. So we want 428 to be equal to a plus 1. This means a is equal to 427. Let's set the other factor of 1 equal to b plus 1, so that b is equal to 0. So this will result that n is equal to 2 to the power of 427. 3 to the power of 0 will be equal to 1, so that just vanishes. So now let's consider the second line. Here the largest factor, 214, will go to a plus 1, so a will be equal to 213. The other factor will set equal to b plus 1, so b is equal to 1. So then we have n is equal to 2 to the power of 213 times 3. Now in the next line, we take 107 and set that equal to a plus 1. We get a is equal to 106. Then we have 2 is equal to b plus 1, so b is equal to 1. And 2 is equal to c plus 1, so c is equal to 1. And this gives the value of n equal to 2 to the power of 106, times 3 times 5. In the last line, we set 107 equal to a plus 1, so a is equal to 106, and 4 is equal to b plus 1, so b is equal to 3. This gives the number 2 to the power of 106 times 3. So these are the four possible candidates which have exactly 426 
proper factors. We just need to figure out which number is smallest. This is pretty easy to do by inspection, but just to make it crystal clear, let's divide each number by 2 to the power of 106. Whichever number is then the smallest number will correspond to the original smallest possibility. So we go ahead and divide each number by 106, and all we have to do is compare these options. Obviously, the first two options will be very, very large, so we're just considering 3 times 5 versus 3 to the power of 3. 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 27, and 3 times 5 is equal to 15. 15 is clearly the smaller option, and so the smallest number will be 2 to the power of 106 times 3 times 5. So the smallest number n is 2 to the power of 106 times 3 times 5. And that's the smallest number with exactly 426 proper factors. What an amazing question. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.